The world may not agree on just how real professional wrestling or sports entertainment may be. But when the masses love or hate one performer more than the rest, mainstream fame is usually within reach. Not every pro wrestler who has pursued a Hollywood acting career has found success, but that might not be as bad as it sounds. Some of the greatest legends of wrestling found their way into Hollywood films, and still nobody noticed. Here are Screen Rant's 10 wrestlers you didn't know appeared in movies. We've got something we want you to take a look at. I think you'll find it interesting. Hulk Hogan. Sure, Hulk Hogan has made more appearances in Hollywood films than nearly any other wrestler before or since, but one of his strangest roles unfortunately slipped by plenty of younger moviegoers. The original Gremlins is a classic, but its sequel is a whole lot weirder. Director Joe Dante was offered the job with the promise that he could do just about anything he wanted with the new batch. As a result, audiences were stunned to see the film burn up, apparently the work of the film's maniac monsters. Luckily, Hulk Hogan was sitting in the same theater, intimidating the gremlins until they returned to the regular program. Okay, you guys, listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. The cameo was strange and unexpected, but sadly was replaced in the home video release, depriving thousands of Hulkamaniacs from seeing it for themselves. Terry Funk. He may not have gained the mainstream fame of Hulk Hogan or Randy Savage, but there aren't many Hall of Fame wrestlers who can hold a candle to Terry Funk. So it's no surprise he took his signature hardcore attitude to the big screen, appearing in movies like Roadhouse and Over the Top. It's hard to believe that the towering beast could ever be beaten in a fight by Patrick Swayze or Sam Elliott. But since he's as famous for his love of a good time as he is for his fighting, we're willing to bet he simply let the movie stars win. Lenny Montana Beginning his wrestling career as the Zebra Kid, the Brooklyn-born Lenny Montana found success due mainly to his 6 foot 6 inch frame. But when wrestling dried up for Montana in the late 60s, his size was put to another use, recruited to work as an enforcer for New York's Colombo crime family. After a stint in prison, Montana acted as a bodyguard for the family, which is what brought him onto the set of Francis Ford Coppola's Godfather. The massive but soft-spoken enforcer was immediately cast as Vito Corleone's top hitman, Luca Brasi. Even with a small part in the movie, Montana would enjoy a long acting career as a result. Captain Lou Albano No wrestling fan of the 50s and 60s will forget Captain Lou Albano, since he racked up wins and legendary status as both a wrestler and a manager. And his long beard, face piercings, and Hawaiian shirts didn't hurt either. Despite that fame, Lou Albano's acting chops made him almost unrecognizable as the slick Sicilian Frank the Fixer in Brian De Palma's Wise Guys. Give me a ball, ball give me a beer. Frankie, Benny D, you're looking good. And even fewer fans realized the once crazed wrestler would entertain kids every week as Nintendo's mascot in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Now that's range. Kevin Nash. It's hard to think of a pro wrestler who has found more success than Kevin Nash. Winning almost two dozen world championships and founding the NWO, the man formerly known as Diesel found legitimate fame in films and TV, most recently appearing in the Magic Mike films as Tarzan. But Nash's fans may have caught his big screen debut earlier than they thought. When the villain Shredder ingested the mutating ooze in the second Ninja Turtles movie, it was Nash who brought the gigantic Super Shredder to life. Let's be glad that none of his other roles required the actor to bury himself under a dock for no reason whatsoever. Sable The 1990s were a serious turning point for the WWF. As the Attitude Era saw the company target new adult audiences, the new divas more than did the trick. No female wrestler was more popular than Rena Mero, better known as Sable. When Sable left the WWF in 1999, she turned to films. But we doubt that beating up former SNL cast member Chris Kattan in Corky Romano was what she had in mind. As satisfying as it was to watch her fight, the flop must have opened her eyes. She returned to wrestling shortly after. <laughs> Big John Stud. It takes a special kind of villain to bring a stretcher to the ring so his opponent can be carried out when the fight is over. But Big John Stud lived up to his name, going toe to toe with the massive Andre the Giant. A monster heel that big would be hard to miss, but there are some wrestling fans who never saw one of his best roles. The Bruiser Jack Daniels and Harley Davidson in The Marlboro Man. The film was a bomb, but that didn't mean it's any less fun to watch Stud throw Mickey Rourke out a window. Since Rourke would play a pro wrestler 20 years later, we like to think Stud taught him a few tricks of the trade. George the Animal Steel When Jim Myers started wrestling in his free time, it was only meant to help pay bills when he wasn't working as a high school wrestling and football coach. But when wrestling took off, Myers took the name of the Animal and wrestled for the next several decades. In a strange twist of fate, Steele also landed the role in Tim Burton's biopic of the enigmatic director Ed Wood, played by Johnny Depp. 
Steele was recruited to play the part of Wood's friend and collaborator, Tor Johnson, who was himself a Swedish wrestler turned film actor. Isn't it wonderful? Ox Baker. Although he began his wrestling career as a nerdy hero, the legendary Ox Baker soon became one of the most well-known villains of the 1960s. Famous for his heated interviews and his signature move, the heart punch, it was only a matter of time until Ox made it into film. He's dangerous, sir. I know. I'll be okay. Escape from New York became a cult classic thanks to director John Carpenter's dystopic Manhattan prison, and Ox was definitely in top form when taking on Snake Plissken in a fight to the death. With a catchphrase as simple as I love to hurt people, there's no doubt that he enjoyed the chance to do just that to star Kurt Russell. Kimberly Page Diamond Dallas Page was one of the biggest names to ever come out of the WCW, but his wife and on-screen manager Kimberly was just as memorable. But wrestling fans would be forgiven if they didn't catch her surprise cameo in Judd Apatow's 40-year-old virgin. Stepping into the spotlight thanks to a wardrobe malfunction at a speed dating event may not have been the return to fame she was hoping for but it definitely makes her brief appearance hard to forget. Okay, so what did you think of our list? Did we miss any of your favorite memorable performances from wrestlers turned actors? Let us know in our comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more videos like this one.